Chanel Monet Arc Android. Hi, my needle drops. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. Going to do an album review. The new Chanel Monet Arc Android. Before I get into the review, I want to say for all you new and true blue Ariel Pink fans, Ariel has a new project together called Ariel Pink with uh, added pizzazz. There's a track from that project's upcoming EP on the website right now. Download it over there. Good times. Janelle Monet is a singer, songwriter, dancer, a real triple threat. This is her debut full-length album, and this thing has gotten some really heavy votes inside the mod box since I put that thing on the YouTube channel. But I kind of just sat on the review and didn't do it as maybe soon as I should have. And maybe that was because of uh, fear, an irrational fear, kind of like how some people fear going to the dentist even though it's not that bad. Just the fear of trying something new, I guess, because Monet is Grammy nominated, she is on P. Diddy's record label, and she's also been featured on American Idol. Just a lot of uncharted territory for my reviews. Not exactly the type of music I'm usually talking about. But to be honest, once I jumped into this LP, it wasn't bad. And here's how bad it wasn't. Despite all the mainstream hype and big time musicians surrounding Monet as of late, do not take this LP for your average pop album. In fact, most of the tracks don't even follow a normal pop structure, but that's besides the point. This thing is more conceptual, intricate, and colorful than most of the indie albums I've heard this year, and totally spits in the face of the idea that as you get more popular, you have to water down your art. This thing is a big time production and has more credits on it than a feature length film, and it's definitely not an album for just putting on the hi-fi and just leaving it alone and going about and washing your dishes and eating your food and petting your cat. To fully appreciate this, you have to sit down on the edge of your seat and just take in all of its twists and turns instrumentally and emotionally. Because this thing is all over the place, in a good way. Because hip-hop, jazz, Motown, funk, contemporary R&B, and orchestral pop all survive in harmony among these 18 tracks. This album's stylistic shifts just keep things feeling fresh and engaging, and nothing really feels out of place except for the Of Montreal collaboration on Make the Bus, which is pretty much done in the band's usual over-eccentric style. It's really not that big of a pothole in the ride. And Ride is probably the best analogy I can come up with for this album, especially in the first half, which I kind of neglected up until this point to mention, but this LP is actually split into two suites, the second and third of a four-part series, which is really not complete right now, but the first part came out in an EP before this. But anyway, a ride. Yeah. The first suite of this LP is incredibly fluid, with just one song oozing into the next. You really can't tell where one starts and one ends, just one thing jumping into another. Overall, the first half of this album does emphasize a more straightforward approach, taking a lot of influence from guys like Michael Jackson, Prince, and James Brown. Just a lot of upbeat, funky, and brassy tracks. And even the slower numbers on the first suite, for me, are just too immediate to deny. The first half has its moments of experimentation, but it's mostly catchy tunes. The second part of this LP, the third suite, is actually where things get a little weird. The longest tracks are in the third suite, the songs are way more abstract and linear, not repeating a lot of hooks, a lot of string sections, and there's even one moment where the string section is playing the melody from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory's Pure Imagination. I'm surprised I haven't heard a lot of people talking about it, but the thing is, it's either the melody or it's so close to the melody that it's definitely inspiration or some kind of And considering that, that this LP would lift a melody from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, from pure imagination specifically. I feel like it just kind of embraces Archeandroid's whole notion of fantasy. It definitely works with the imaginative aesthetic that the lyrics dabble in. But of course Archeandroid isn't all sci-fi and futurism and androids. There's some love songs in here to soften the blow. But overall, the third suite is a real 
mixed bag and save some of its weirdest parts for the end, like on the nine minute Bop by Ah, which is full of jazzy improvisations and 007 orchestrations. It's possibly one of the most ambitious moments on this LP, but may go sort of unnoticed just because it's so long, it's kind of strung out, and it's at the end of the album. But to go back to what I said about ambition, this thing has oodles of it. And maybe it's to the point where it may turn off some listeners, because if you like your pop simple, sweet, and straightforward, this thing may not be the most easygoing album of 2010, but for a concept album, it's really playful, it's really fun, and it's really thrilling. My original gripe about this LP, or really my first reaction to it, is that I didn't like it, or that I wasn't going to like it. And the reason I felt that way was mostly because the sound, the production, the quality of this recording sounds very much like a modern or contemporary R&B recording, like you may hear on commercial radio, which is really not my thing. However, though this thing sounds very modern, though it has a very new studio sound, and it sounds like, you know, she recorded in a studio that she had access to because she's on P. Diddy's record label, it sounds like it was recorded kind of in that context, but still, the songwriting is fantastic, this thing does not forget, in fact, it embraces the fundamentals of jazz and Motown. It's everything I love about these older styles of music, but put into a much more updated context and thrown together with a very Android-based subplot. Now, there's tons of stuff in terms of concepts and ideas that I could talk about, and even relate it to Fritz Lang's Metropolis, and just ask all day, what does this lyric mean? What does this lyric mean? For me, that's more of a personal adventure that one has to make, kind of interpreting all these things. And I could be talking about how famous Janelle Monae is getting, and about how a lot of people are just singing the overhyped blues. But that is just a bunch of outside contextual stuff that doesn't really need to be discussed. I'm here to vouch for the music. And I can say, beyond the shadow of a doubt, in my opinion, that the music on this album is good. Very, very good. In fact, it's excellent. In fact, I'm giving it a strong 8, if not a light 9. It's a brave new album for a brave new world, and I highly recommend it. But let me know what you think of this thing. Do you love it? Do you hate it? And why? Anthony Fantano, Janelle Monet, Arc Android, Sweets 2 and 3. Forever. <laughs>